Hi everybody. I wanted to start this little video by saying a special hello to Patty and Jack in Ohio. Patty and Jack uh, watch my videos when they're at home and they were just recently here on Campobello and uh, camped at the provincial park and came to visit me. Had a little tour of the garden and the cabin and the hoopos and whatever. I enjoyed meeting you and hope you had a safe trip back home. What follows is a few clips uh, taken around various areas in the garden, I guess. First I was harvesting uh, some of the fresh fruit that's available, uh, black currants and uh, blueberries out of the garden. But mostly I wanted to finally show you uh, the sheet mulched area that I'm using as a perennial fruit and vegetable area. Things have been planted in there for several weeks, but for some reason I haven't shown you and I've just recently sheet mulched a little more of it and we'll finish with a, a look inside of the, uh, uh, the hoopos and eggplant and a few things that are doing quite nicely in there. You no doubt I've noticed I have a lot of competition. Prince Leah is really sending forth this afternoon. I don't know if you can hear that chainsaw in the background or not, but we have a crew here working on the island taking trees and limbs and whatever away from the hydro lines, which I think is an excellent idea, especially after what we just went through with Hurricane Arthur. So, hope you enjoy the clips that follow. Well, I don't think I've shown you the grapes in a while. They didn't really get any larger, uh, but as you can see, they are starting to ripen quite nicely. I suspect that'll still take several more weeks here for them to get sweet enough to pick. But, uh, I was hoping the individual grapes would get bigger than that. I don't know if they continue to grow as they ripen All or not. The chilies are producing quite well. Some of them are so heavy that they've actually snapped off a branch or so here and there. This is the uh, cherry chili called Big Bomb, uh, which is moderately hot, quite spicy. But the Thai chilies have been in bloom for a while and are producing lots of small green chilies. Nothing has started to ripen yet. But there are four, at least four, I think, of these plants in here, and they're all loaded, so I'll have more Thai chilies and I'll know what to do. I've had a number of the sweet bell peppers. I'll have to put the list down below again because I can never remember the variety names, but uh, I'm trying to leave some of them now to, to ripen. See, I, I assume they'll be red when they're ripe, but uh, you never know. It might be a variety that's yellow or orange or something, but I've eaten quite a few of them. Very nice. Well, I've been having tomatoes every day now for the last, oh, I guess, three weeks or so. Very pleased with them. These, of course, are the yellow pear. More down here. So far, I think all that I've harvested have just been off of these first two plants as you come in the door. Um, they're a month older than the other, well, other six, I guess. I think there are eight plants in here. Um, I want to show you a comparison of the uh, Gardener's Delight, the ones that are ripening on this on this plant, as compared to the ones that are on some of the plants further down here. I'll pick one of these and take it down and show you. These Gardener Delight were all grown from seeds from the same seed packet. Now it is an heirloom open pollinated uh, variety, but I'm surprised at the difference. The first plant up there has clusters with a lot more tomatoes on and the other plants have fewer on but the tomatoes are much larger or well a third larger or so. so having great luck with the eggplant this year a couple of years ago or I guess it was I planted one eggplant in here and it bloomed all summer never produced anything Got a hand in there to give you an idea of the size of that one I'm going to harvest that one today and use it I watch, I think it was the uh, Victory Garden program on PBS with uh, Roger Swain, and he said if you pick the earlier ones when they're not, you know, before they get full size, it will encourage the other ones to, to grow larger. Well, this one is already larger than any I've ever grown, so it's coming off and going to be in a stir-fried bed of brassicas that I planted in the last video. And they're doing quite nicely. I sprayed them once with uh, BT. You can always get cabbage moths even inside here. But I don't see any, any additional damage. There were some holes in the leaves from 
I think probably cabbage moths when they were <coughs> when the seedlings were outside. But uh, one good thing about being in the greenhouse hoop house with them is uh, you don't have to keep respraying so frequently because you don't get rain that uh, washes the BT off the leaves. And I'm careful when I water; I just water around the roots and don't get the leaves wet. This container of sunflowers reminds me of the children's television program Sesame Street. I don't know if it's still even on television or not, but they used to play a game with the children of which one of these things is not like the other. These all came out of the same seed packet. It's supposed to be a dwarf variety of sunflower, and I do have some growing in a trough like window box that are you know, half the height of the these short ones here. But I guess they grow taller according to the soil that they have, but this guy didn't get the email out of the same seed packet, but I don't think it's even going to be the same color. The other ones don't start with that uh, yellow, but it is going to have multi-blossom heads, which the short ones have as well. So should be looking nice shortly, I guess. And what I plan to do is a time-lapse video of sunflowers following the sun. At least that's something I'd like to be able to try. So. Maybe you'll see that in a future well, black video. Black currants are ripe. Time to start picking them. I don't know if I have enough this year to make a black currant jam or not. I have four bushes, um, and they're much larger bushes than they were last year. They grew quite a bit last year, but I think there's less fruit on them this year than there was last year. I don't know if that had anything to do with the severe winter that we had or not. But anyway, I'll pick them all and see what I can do with them. Well, I guess there was a few more berries there than I thought there was. That's a two quart container, or two quarts up to this mark, so it's a little less than two quarts, but uh, I have to do a lot of picking over yet. All these little branches, of course, have to be removed. Something to do while watching some silly television program this evening. And I think out of that I'll probably get, oh, reduces by at least half. I'll probably get a couple of pint jars, so they will be enjoyed with toast and muffins and things this winter anyway. Well, now that the black currants have been picked, I'm thinking I'll just move right on into the uh, high bush blueberries. They're not all ripe, but uh, I'll show you what they look like here in just a minute. Well, so much for my idea of picking a lot of blueberries today. There were quite a few out here yesterday, and I think I've had a visit from a raccoon last night. This particular bush is under uh, black plastic uh, bird netting. I don't know if you can see that or not, how well that shows up. But, um, I do have some problem with the uh, robins. They, they certainly like to have a few blueberries, but... When I lose as many in one night as I did this time, I'm, I'm thinking raccoons. Anyway, I'll pick a few. There are a lot more green ones yet to ripen. I'll, when I see them ripe, I'll have to pick them, I guess, rather than, than wait 24 hours. Well, not that any proof or evidence was required that it was coons that did the damage, but when you find clusters like this all over the ground, underneath the blueberry bushes and further away, a few feet away from the bush. That's coons. They pick a whole cluster, green ones and all, eat the ripe ones and just throw the green ones on the ground. So there's no doubt about it, it was coons. Anyway, I, they freeze very well. I will freeze these in a large freezer bag. If you can see, even though this is a spider, I'm not going to freeze him. He's down in there crawling around. But I will freeze them and just keep adding to the bag until I have enough to make the small batch of blueberry jam that I'm interested in. Well, this is fig number three, and I have to keep telling myself fig. <laughs> Yesterday I filmed the harvesting of fig number two, and I continually called it a plum for some reason. This one isn't as ripe as the one yesterday, so I don't know. A little harder coming off, but... I realize there are probably fig farmers out there that don't count their figs, but... Mmm. Yeah, delicious. My two little fig shrubs here, I wouldn't call them trees yet, I guess. There isn't room enough in here in the hoop house for them to ever grow up into a big tree, but they're only about, uh, well, I don't know, a little over four feet tall. 
quite a few green figs still on them. I've been watching the other tree, not this one, because it had the figs on it the longest. And this one, not being watched, decided it would ripen its first. Uh, they are very good. I'm very pleased to have my first figs. Well, I want to take you out and show you the uh, sheet mulched area, the perennial garden. I don't think I've shown that since I did the sheet mulching earlier in the spring. Yesterday I cleaned out the larger, the older chicken coop, the new one with the young birds and it doesn't have to be cleaned out yet. But, uh, I expanded the sheep mulched area. That shows, you can sort of see the difference in the two colors. The one on the part on the left has been composting since early spring so it's gotten quite dark and this area to the right here is uh, the area that I just sheet mulched yesterday with quite a bit of cardboard and then covered it with the uh, manure and shavings and whatever out of the chicken coop and it smells fresh this morning. <laughs> but the, the rather nasty odor lasts for a couple of weeks and then the, the odor goes away. But give you a look at some of the things. This is my Asian pear. Uh, it's grafted, a grafted Asian pear with four different varieties. You can see all those name tags down there on the different grafts. Um, it's been in the ground now for, well I don't know, let me see, this is August, a uh, month and a half anyway, and it's done quite a bit of, of growing. I haven't done anything to try to train it, like this branch here should be made to grow out this way further, and I will probably do that next year. I can't very well prune something like that off because it's the best growing branch on that particular graft. So you do too much pruning on one of those things, you lose the one of your four varieties. But so far so good. Um, hopefully it makes it through the winter. It isn't uh, supposed to be relatively resistant to a lot of different um, diseases and blights and whatever that affect the other varieties of pears. However, it is getting some damage from bugs that are eating it. This leaf there, that's, I would say a leaf miner of some sort. It looks like the interior of the leaf has been pretty well devastated. But anyway, they're alive and looking quite well. Uh, the three cherry trees that I planted earlier are doing quite well. I just mulched them yesterday with the sheet mulch for the first time. They won't have so much competition from grass and whatever now. Supposed to see your first cherries on these within three years, I guess. This is the smaller one. It was the smallest, of course, when I planted it, but it's also put on quite a bit of growth. This is my good King Henry. Uh, the four plants at the corners are a bit larger than the other four plants that you see there. They germinated early and uh, the other four were late germinating, but they've all progressed quite a bit since I got them in the ground. My poor goji berries. How much of this you can see. The, on the left there, that relatively healthy looking part is new, has come up from the, from the base since I transplanted it here. But the other stem uh, had a lot of leaves on it and something really likes the leaves, just leaves the rib. It's not slugs. I've kept slug bait around it. I don't know what it is. I've never caught the the little critter that does that, it's a, probably a, a larvae of some sort, or butterfly larvae of some sort. And this is the other one over here. So far it hasn't sent one of those healthy plants up from the base, but uh, it also has been chewed on quite a bit. So I don't know, I'm kind of skeptical now as whether or not these will make it through this winter, but we won't know that until next spring, I guess. This is the one surviving black currant that I started from cuttings. And it looks to me even healthier than the one, well, in this same video here, you see me picking some this year's black currants. This plant looks healthier than the ones that are two or three years old. I certainly am going to uh, try some more next year. Next, next winter I'll take more, more cuttings and uh, grow some more of these from cuttings. I love the black currants and it takes quite a few bushes to make a significant amount of, of jam. 
These are the Hascap. Hascaps, H-A-S-K-A-B or C-A-B. Uh, three of them. They've been in the ground for a few weeks now. This one has put on some new growth. The other two haven't, but uh, this is new growth on here, each one of the stems, and that one is doing quite well. The only thing that I'm a bit concerned about with these, uh, the instructions that came with them said they like a light sandy soil. Well, I don't have a light sandy soil anywhere on my property. Uh, I wouldn't call my soil clay, but it's a very heavy loam. So they're gonna have to adjust to that or, or not make it. I'm not sure which will happen. These, in the background here, I am, amazed with. I just watched Patrick's video, uh, One Yard Revolution, on his, which are seven or eight feet tall. This is the Jerusalem artichoke, or sunchoke. But I grew these from seed, and I had no idea even if they would, uh, um, you know, germinate from the seeds. Actually, when I ordered them, I didn't know I was ordering seeds. I thought I was getting some tubers, and this little package of seeds arrived in the mail. Anyway, they are probably between four and five feet tall, the tallest one. Not showing any signs that they would bloom. I'm not sure if they will bloom one year from seed, first year from seed. I'm thinking if they don't bloom for me, I probably won't dig any of them up. I'll just leave all of the tubers that I'm sure are forming down there in the ground. But they've been in the ground for about the same length of time as the good King Henry and They've really taken off since they got into the into the soil and got out of their grow bags. And along the back here, those are Egyptian walking onions. That was one of the things that let me know it was time that I could probably plant out here. These particular Egyptian walking onions were little bulbs that I planted this spring. And they just sat here and did nothing until the uh, uh, chicken dressing here on top of the cardboard uh, started to uh, decompose and now they've taken off. So once they started to grow nicely, I've been planting other things in here as well. And this is my one raspberry. I guess it's just one bush. It's a variety called uh, Brazel, spelled, well, like Brazil only in Z-E-L instead of Z-I-L on the end and it can be grown, it says, in containers, but I don't tend to try to grow it in containers here. I've had a few raspberries very low down, which I guess would have been some of last year's growth. I still haven't gone online to check. I'm not sure if this is one that might bear fruit in the fall, or if I have to wait next spring for all of these nice new canes to have their first raspberries. But we shall find out, I guess. Anyway, that is a little look at the sheet mulch garden. Get back and give you more of a perspective of it. Wobble, wobble, wobble here, I'm sure. Plans are when I clean out the both coops again before winter that I will continue and uh, sheet mulch right over to the cabin um, and other areas as well. It isn't going to take much more to do that, but I have, I had three uh, comfrey plants here and only two of them made it through the winter, and they're not doing too well here in, in, uh, in the summer. So I'm thinking if I sheet mulched around them and get rid of some of the competing weeds and grass that they would uh, perhaps do better. Well, thank you very much for watching. I'll close this video off with a look at my monster <laughs> winter squash patch here, complete with weeds. There's just no way of getting in there to weed anymore without stepping on a vine and they have gone over through the trees if you can see that happened last year as well and i thought i found all of the squash in the fall but this spring when there wasn't any leaves on some of these trees here i saw a patch on the ground with a, a pile of squash seeds which i guess must have been a squash plant that i missed last winter we dive down in here you should be able to see both varieties in this area oops yeah i guess you can see those there growing a uh, buttercup and butternut varieties. I haven't grown butternut before, and they are both heirloom open pollinated varieties, seeds from the Annapolis Seed Company. So anxious to give them a taste in a little while. Thank you very much for watching.